All right, Dwayne, welcome to Pop Top and Rialto Heaven. How are you doing today? Good. Pretty good. All right, you're going to run us through uh, just some of the pieces, yeah. some of the pieces and parts of the of the of the cooler setup. Order and the kit. You get the cooler. This is the 4921. That's six inches by 24, I believe it is. They have a 4920 that's only four inches tall that somebody has installed that appears to work pretty well too. This one, I think, would have more reserve capacity for the, the uh, extreme conditions. It comes with one piece of hose. You buy the extra piece of hose, and you order the Sonax adapter kit. This is what actually connects to the transmission. These are the adapters. These are the fittings that go into the adapters. These are the other one. The O-rings to seal everything. And this is the splice you put in the water hose that you cut off of the original cooler. And this is pretty much everything you need to do the job. Kind of get an idea there. Handy little clamps here I put on the water hose. Before I cut it loose from the old one, I got these at Harbor Freight. Unfortunately, there's only one of each size in a set of four, so you have to buy two sets to get two clamps. But if you catch them on sale or with coupon, they're six bucks or something. Uh, some people have used a pair of uh, vice grips with a cloth or something on it to just to pinch off the water flow a little bit so you don't drain all of it out when you're doing that. Uh, Teflon tape, little flashlight, a couple of tire wraps, uh, marker for positioning, got to have the uh, torx wrench to take the engine cover off on the new ones. The 12 valve six cylinder, you don't need that because you want to take that cover off. The hard part to find is a 24 inch extension to reach down in there to them. There's an 8 millimeter hex bit and a universal joint to get down in there. Half inch wrench to put the Sonax adapter together. A 13 and a 10 millimeter socket with a 6 inch extension to drop the belly pan. A screwdriver to remove the top part of the grill. This is basically just a nut driver for tightening the hose clamps. And a 5 millimeter for the bottom of the uh, transmission pan to do the final fluid level check. Razor knife, this, this is just stuff I happen to have. This and this tape, rubber tape, and just basically you need some kind of padding. I put padding in so that there's less chance of any metal on metal contact any place after you get it installed. Okay. And a funnel, little drain pan, little a little bit of antifreeze, a little bit of uh, transmission fluid for filling the cooler and the line, topping it off and all that. And rat tail file, you do have to do a slight modification to the grill on any of them because of the, it pushes everything out a little bit and it's not too difficult. Hopefully. <laughs>so Dwayne we're gonna be doing uh, we're gonna be showing this on a one of the newer 201 horsepower engines right um, which is what we'll be working on today but it can be done as well on the uh, 140 horse and the five cylinder as far as that goes they all use the same original cooler the slight the slight differences in the actual installation of the cooler behind the grill uh, we'll do this one and then I think you got a uh, 
99 or 2000 or something we can look at and point out the differences. Uh, that actually gives me some ways to I've already got the cover, engine cover off of here. This is where the three bolts are. Right here. This is the um, torques. And then you need to pull battery cover. And the this one's already disconnected, but some of these are stuck in the little holes on the side of this, so you got to pop them out. There's two of them. You get that. And there's the Up out of the way. There's where you have to reach way down in there to get to everything. And there's not enough room to do it from the bottom because the starter and uh, cables and water lines and everything else in the way. So you have to do it all from the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, take a, lot a peek. Of it is done by feel. <laughs> and if you don't get at least five new holes in your arm, yeah, you haven't a done a job. proper job. <laughs> <laughs> On the these newer ones, there are four screws for the grill. One at the top, and one right down here on each side. Go on the top of the grill, the long ones go, or the ones that are down in the bottom. Just so you don't forget before you put them back. You can use pipe dope. I usually use Teflon tape for fitting. And I have found that two complete wraps works the best. Because when you screw these into these adapters, you want to screw it in very good, but not too far. Get it too far in there, this brass will actually stick inside, and you can't get the banjo bolt down through there when you get ready to put it in. Uh, if you do accidentally get a little too far in there, you can use a small file and, and file down the end of it a little bit. Not have a clean it out real good. Make sure there's no brass filings in there before you put it in. Uh, is that something you can feel by just putting your finger in there and seeing if it's, it's yeah, you, too you far? Yeah, you can see. Well, you can actually see the inside of it. In okay, there. got it. Yes. All right. And I, I just try not. That's why I put two wraps of tape on there because mm -hmm. it helps it seal better without having to go quite as far. If you do, if you take these back out, the next, make sure you do everything the first time. Hopefully, it's a one-shot deal. The um, they make a bypass 